One of the functions of culture is to give stability and predictability to interpersonal relationships. Anywhere that people start functioning together, pretty quickly a culture is going to emerge. It's not one that will be imposed, it is simply one that will evolve. In short order, there will be certain ways to do things, certain ways not to do them, certain things we value, certain things we don't, things that we talk freely about, things that we avoid talking about, certain ways to tackle problems, certain ways to settle differences. A culture begins to emerge, and it gives us predictability as to how people will react when I do certain things. Now, some of us enjoy a lot of options and enjoy a lot of flexibility and, 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 and the opportunity for novel things to be going on. We like variety. Others don't really care for that. But even those who really love variety don't want to work in a world where everything is constantly in upheaval and change. We all need some stability. And culture provides predictability and stability. But what happens then is that when you come along with change, and innovation is a big change, the culture starts fighting back because it sees its role as to keep things the way they are. And the more drastic your innovation, the larger the sweep of your innovation, the more the culture is going to push back. That's its nature. That's its job, to keep things predictable and stable. One of the most interesting metaphors to describe this is from a woman named Virginia Satir, who pioneered the area that we today call conjoint family therapy. Virginia was at the apex of her career in the 50s and was one of the first people to begin working with families in therapy rather than working with people one-on-one. -on -one. And she began to see that families develop their own culture. And she started thinking of that family culture as a family system. In fact, she gave us a lot of the vocabulary that's still used today to describe family systems. As she looked at family systems, she realized that family systems operate like all other systems. The function of a system is to keep things in balance. So we have a HVAC system in this room whose purpose is to keep things at a balance point insofar as temperature and humidity is concerned so that people are not sweating like I am right now. <laughs> we have an electrical system whose purpose is to keep things at a balanced luminosity. Your car has heating systems and cooling systems whose purpose is to keep the temperature of your vehicle at a balanced uh, temperature. And so the purpose of systems is to maintain balance. Accounting systems keep the books balanced. Inventory systems keep the right balance of things on the shelf. Systems, therefore, resist anything that disturbs the balance. Culture is a kind of system. Well, what Virginia noticed is that you can think of a system like a mobile suspended from a ceiling. And there are various elements in this mobile. And when it hangs motionless, it's because they have established themselves at the balance point for that mobile. If you walk up to it and you tap one of those elements, the mobile will begin to dance. And the whole purpose of the dance is to get things back in balance. Now, if you just tap it, it will have a dance. But if you walk up and slap it, 
the dance gets very dramatic very quickly. We need to think of corporate culture is like that mobile. If you slap it, it will fight back. It will go into an elaborate dance to reestablish the balance point it's trying to preserve. And so for those of us who are innovators, one of the challenges is that we need to approach innovation incrementally if it's a sweeping innovation. You see, if I slap that mobile, even if I tap it, it's going to eventually get back to its original balance point. But what if I walked over to it and I took a paper clip and I put it on one element of the, of the mobile and then stepped back and it would dance a little bit and it would establish balance again, but the balance point is slightly <coughs> shifted. And then I put another paper clip on it and the balance point shifts some more. And little by little, it ends up in a completely different balance that is the balance that I was pursuing. Those of us who are innovatively minded tend to want to push the innovation too fast. And we get a pushback from our culture that is that mobile trying to reestablish its balance point. And where we can, and we can't always do it, I've headed some innovative efforts that we did not have the time to do it. Incremental change is more desirable and in the long run more effective than simply coming in and making wholesale change. But we've got to then, even as we're going at things incrementally, be continually promoting a culture that is receptive to change that is receptive to innovation. <laughs>